As of this afternoon, the U.S. is nearing 4 million confirmed cases in the United States, and that's growing. Almost 141,000 lives have been lost. That number is also sadly growing. And the lack of national leadership that has been apparent since the beginning of this crisis is only seeming to get worse, with the mayor of Washington, D.C. today calling for the federal government to, to step up, particularly when it comes to an aggressive national campaign to test Americans which, with quick results and then conduct immediate contact tracing so as to contain the spread of the virus. We can't have our national leadership throwing up their hands. Um, this may be a time to recenter and reset. Today, President Trump announced that he is bringing back the White House Coronavirus Task Force briefing, saying he'll now, quote, get involved due to the surges. To the surges of the virus in Texas and Florida. But we have already seen months of examples of what the president does at these briefings. He often downplays the threat of the virus, and he frequently lies about what is really happening. Here's the president four months ago today at one of these briefings, March 20th, when more than 200 Americans had already died. My message to the American people is that uh, there is a very low incidence of death. You understand that. And... Uh, we're going to come through this stronger than ever before. There are labs across the country that don't have the testing supplies they need. What specific actions well, is the administration taking? Well, it's going very well, I tell you what. That's right. Four months ago, the president said testing was going very well. It was not. And labs continue to lag in being able to test people who need tests, who want tests, and to turn around quick results. Now, three months ago to this day, on April 20th, with more than 40,000 Americans dead, President Trump continued to try to paint a rosy picture of this tragedy, saying that the administration had tremendous testing capability. This capacity is sufficient to allow states to conduct diagnostic testing to treat patients, as well as contact uh, tracing to contain outbreaks. Contain what outbreaks? What outbreaks are being contained? Which ones? It was not sufficient then, and health experts say it is not sufficient today. In some parts of the in some parts of the country, any serious contact tracing campaign is non-existent. Now, just minutes ago, President Trump tweeted this image, saying, "Quote: Many people say that it is patriotic to wear a face mask when you can't socially distance. There is nobody more patriotic than me, your favorite president." Unquote. This image comes after months of President Trump openly mocking people who wear masks and refusing to set an example by wearing one publicly. Two months ago today, two months ago today, on May 20th, the death toll had surpassed 92,000, and Michigan's attorney general was publicly pleading for President Trump to wear a mask when he visited a Ford factory. And the next day, the president visited that Ford factory and did not wear the mask for the public portion of the tour. He said he didn't want to, quote, give press the pleasure of seeing him wearing a mask. Mask wearing, according to health experts, is a critical tool to containing the coronavirus. And the message the president has sent has been clear. His supporters across the country, as well as others, are constantly pushing back on health requests. Please, every American wear a mask when in public. The horrible example that the president set have, may have actually peaked one month ago today, June 20th. With nearly 120,000 Americans dead, President Trump held an indoor rally. No masks were required. The Washington Post obtained video of his staffers removing stickers from chairs. These stickers encouraged social distancing. The president at this rally used a racist term for the virus, and he claimed inexplicably that he wanted his administration to slow down the testing. You know, testing is a double-edged sword. When you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people, you're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. The virus is spreading because the virus is spreading. It's not spreading because of the testing. And that brings us all to today. With nearly 141,000 141,000 Americans dead from coronavirus. And the Trump administration's testing czar 
Admiral Brett Giroir admitting just this morning that testing is still testing is still not where it needs to be with long wait times continuing across the country. Yet there is still no new presidential strategy to get us out of this spiraling crisis. This refusal to lead has a body count. As CNN's Jason Carroll reports, coronavirus deaths are now rising week over week in almost half of all states. A glimmer of hope on the vaccine front amid the devastating numbers around the country. At least three groups developing vaccines announced early human trial results show so far they are safe and create an immune response. This is a positive result, but again, there is a long way to go. A vaccine cannot come fast enough as cases soar from coast to coast. Florida reporting at least 10,000 new cases today. Right now in the state, nearly 9,400 people are hospitalized fighting the virus. So far, 5,072 lives lost. In Miami-Dade County, intensive care units overtaxed at 130% capacity. This is scary. I mean, now every day it's over 10,000. It's, it's almost like the norm. As long as we don't work together, and I'm talking counties and the state, uh, we're going we're gonna to find ourselves in this problem right now. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis coming face to face with the frustration at his press conference this afternoon. Other states in the South and Sun Belt, like Arizona and Texas, seeing rising numbers as well. Arizona's seven-day average positivity rate is the highest in the country at 24.4 percent, even reaching an astounding 39 percent on Saturday. 87 doctors signed a letter to Governor Doug Ducey urging him not to reopen schools until at least October. Ducey has resisted calls for a statewide mask mandate, something President Trump continues to give mixed messages on. Will you consider a national mandate that people need to wear masks? No, I want people to have a certain freedom, and I don't believe in that. Everybody was saying, don't wear a mask. All of a sudden, everybody's got to wear a mask. And as you know, masks cause problems, too. With that being said, I'm a believer in masks. I think masks are good. Nationwide, the CDC is now forecasting the total U.S. death toll from the virus will be more than 150,000 Americans by August 8th. And in places like Louisiana, where the virus was raging in the spring and then under control with stay-at-home orders, the virus is back and worse than before. All of this while some are still waiting seven days or longer for test results. We're all working to decrease the turnaround times, but let me put this into context. One uh, state was at five days average. Seven states were between four and, uh, four and five days. 18 states were between... States were between two and three days, and the rest were between three and four days. That is not optimum. We want to reduce that. It will be reduced. So again, Jake, the president tweeting out that picture of himself wearing a mask, something that health officials have been asking him to do now for months. Again, the president calling it the patriotic thing to do. Finally, it seems as though the president may have come around. We'll see. Meanwhile, uh, West Virginia, the governor there, now reporting several outbreaks linked to seven churches spread across seven counties there. Jake, another reminder that this virus continues to spread in any place if you're not careful. Jake? Um, just minutes ago, uh, President Trump tweeted this photo of himself, seemingly encouraging mask wearing, calling it uh, patriotic. Uh, what did you make of it? I, <clears throat> I'm very happy to see that. It's about time that happened. Uh, we're in a pretty desperate situation now with the virus raging across the country. More than uh, one to two people a minute are dying today. Uh, and will be tomorrow as well. It's uh, welcome to see the president finally doing what health experts say. I hope he's beginning to follow and our administration will begin to follow many of the other recommendations. Uh, we need leadership desperately. It's not just enough for states we and local communities to do things. We need leadership. I want to play for, for you something that Missouri Governor Mike Parson told a radio show. Video show uh, about children and coronavirus, something fairly shocking. Take a listen. These kids have got to get back to school. They're at the lowest risk possible. And if they do get COVID-19, which they will, 
and they will when they go to school, they're not going to the hospitals. They're not going to have to sit in doctor's office for days. They're going to go home, and, and they're going to get over it. They're going to go home, and then they're, they're going to get over it. Now, it is true uh, that it does seem children under the age of nine uh, are the ones that, that have the least adverse rea uh, reaction. Um, but, but there was so much there that was ignorant, I didn't even know how to react. What do you make of it? Well, the first thing, when we talk about schools, we're talking about K through 12. And those people over 10 have the same kind of risk profile you or I do, or maybe you do, you're a younger man than I am. But still, they have the same risk profile and they can get sick. Secondly, we know that when kids do get sick, it is truly horrendous. Uh, they get the very late stage of the disease. They get heart disease, brain disease, kidney disease. It is uh, terrible. I have a friend whose grandson uh, went through that, barely, barely lived. It is terrible and will be damaged probably for the rest of his life, his, even at this young age. So if they do get it, it's a very bad thing to get. Not only that, but they do spread the virus. This is a cold virus in its essence, the cold virus with a very unpleasant effect that it uh, kills people as well. But it's fundamentally transmitted like cold viruses.